Welcome to the Family Beacon Podcast from Minnesota Family Council with hosts Grace Evans and Moses Bratchrude. Stay informed on the top stories on life, family, and religious freedom. Get the facts, stand for truth. Hello and welcome back to the Family Beacon Podcast. My name is Grace Evans. I'm here with my co-host, Moses Bratchard. Um, We are so excited to be here today. We have an announcement for you guys before we jump into our regularly scheduled content. We will actually be going on a month-long break. The Family Beacon Podcast will not air uh, throughout the whole month of July this summer. That is due to summer. And I honestly, I just recently found out that some jobs, not nonprofits probably, but some jobs will let you have this thing called like summer Fridays where you get to leave at like 12 o'clock because it's, if you have your work done and you can just go enjoy the sun. I feel like this is kind of the equivalent (laughs) of our summer Friday is having a (laughs) podcast break. I will be on family vacation. I think Moses is taking a few breaks, trips, Mm -hmm. et cetera, with family. So um, we will not have the podcast out. Uh, We will let you know later in the episode what you should expect from us, um, what you should pay attention to while we're off air. But in general, don't think for a minute we'll be disappearing from your lives, from your social media feeds. We will still be active on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter at MN Family Council every single day. So make sure you follow us on there for exclusive content. Um, and of course, subscribe to our emails at mfc.org slash subscribe. So we'll tell you more about what you should pay attention to while we're off air. But for now, let's go ahead and jump into our stories. Let me tell you what we'll discuss and then Moses will share our first story. So first of all, we want to share with you um, the Sparkle Creed, which I can't even say with a straight face. We don't want to share it with you. We just feel obligated to do yeah, so. Yeah, so many of you may have heard of like the Apostles' Creed, right? The Athanasian Creed. Well, uh, some woke members of the ELCA, which is a woke denomination, have taken it upon themselves to create their own creed that affirms gender identity. So Moses will break that down for us and we will roll that clip. It is truly hilarious. Secondly, I will be sharing with you about some brave parents here in Minnesota and Osseo who stood up against LGBTQ indoctrination. And Osseo is a district that we have heard a lot about before. So a lot of stuff happening there. A lot of the times the parents are rising up. And so that is a good story for us to share. We also want to highlight um, the recent Dobbs rally last weekend, wherein John, our, John Helmberger, our CEO, gave an amazing speech. Uh, And then finally, of course, we'll share what we're reading and a verse. But let's go ahead and jump into this Sparkle Creed because, oh boy, oh boy, Moses, it's just, it's heresy. It is heresy. That is the word for it. (laughs) Uh, So we're talking about a clip that is, you know, going viral uh, on Twitter. And, you know, you just get that sick feeling whenever you watch a clip and you're like, hmm, I recognize that accent. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> because, of course, it's happening here in Minnesota. Uh, so this is... Um, uh, don't you know? Yeah, you betcha. <laughs> exactly. So so uh, it's a... it's a. Uh, well, you know what? Let's just roll the clip. I invite you to rise in body or spirit and let us confess our faith today in the words of the Sparkle Creed. I believe in the non-binary God whose pronouns are plural. I believe in Jesus Christ, their child, who wore a fabulous tunic and had two dads and saw everyone as a sibling child of God. I believe in the rainbow spirit who shatters our image of one white light and refracts it into a rainbow of gorgeous diversity. I believe in the church of everyday saints as numerous, creative, and resilient as patches on the ace quilt, whose feet are grounded in mud and whose eyes gaze at the stars in wonder. I believe in the calling to each of us that love is love is love, so beloved, let us love. I believe, glorious God, help my unbelief, amen. Wow, Moses. Yeah. Okay, when you sent that to me, I was just in shock, honestly. And yeah. it's here in Edina. Yeah. That's what's crazy. Well, it it, all, it it does make sense, though, a little bit, doesn't it? And I, so I, I just, you know, we need to think about some things. So 
what, what what's going on here? We, we're talking about Edina Community Lutheran Church in Edina, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. And uh, for those of you who live outside the Twin Cities, perhaps, Edina is this rich suburb uh, in the southwest of the Twin Cities, and everybody likes to dunk on it. <laughs> yes. And this is kind of one of those examples. I'm sure Edina is a very nice place to live. Uh, in fact, I know it is. But um, but what's going on here? Um, you know, if you watch other clips from this sermon uh, or service, you can see that there's no one under 50 in the congregation. There's no one who's not white. So what you really have here is uh, you really do have an instance of, of another religion, of, of heresy, as Grace said. So um, the, the sparkle creed that that, these, that this congregation is, is is doing, this is you know supposed to be an adaptation of the Nicene Creed, which came out in 325 AD. The Sparkle Creed dates to 2021, so it's a little bit of a oh, difference. Oh, I didn't even know 2021. I thought it came out like this month. No, no, no. That's this, crazy. This, this, uh, That's this pastor, wild. Yeah, this pastor did not write it. It was written by oh. a, a bisexual priestess in Tennessee, I believe. I just, I wonder what goes through their heads when they're citing it. Like the congregation, because it was, you noted here, no one under 50 in the congregation. Yeah. So it's all older people. Like, are they just, do they actually believe this? Do they believe that, like, what, there's like a line about like, with feet in the mud and eyes raised up to the stars and wonder. It's like, I don't. Do you guys actually, are you seriously saying this or are you just virtue signaling? That's what I want to know. If they actually believe these things, like, do you believe that God is a they? Yeah. No, I, I don't know. I, I do wonder that. Yeah. And I, so like, you know, uh, we, we say, a, we say a creed at our, at our church every week. Which and, one do you say? Do you rotate uh, We say them? the Nicene Creed, except uh, twice a year we say the Athanasian Creed. That's what we do which too. Which is awesome. Yeah. I think we say the Apostles' Creed too, though, actually. The Apostles' Creed is amazing. Yeah. So we have these great historic Christian creeds that are great encapsulations of, of our faith. And they're incredible, incredible documents. They're, they're not, um, they're, they're right below the Bible, in my opinion, in terms of the value that they have for 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 our faith and what we believe. But when you twist that, you are doing something extremely dangerous. You are mm-hmm. you are embarking on a road that is not going to go well for you. And I will say like she's a she's a pastor, you know, she's Pastorette. leading she, uh, she's a priestess, she's leading this creed. But somehow I was still surprised when I heard that people were just following along and saying what she was saying. It just seemed so blatantly far removed from anything that has to do with historic Christianity. It really made me think of uh, of Galatians uh, 6, which I will read now, mm-hmm. just a c- couple verses. Do not be deceived. God so is not mocked. For whatever one sows, that he will also reap. For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. And let us not grow weary of doing good. For in due season we will reap if we do not give up. <sighs> so this is, I think that's really convicting. Is this, I, I just ask you, and this is a serious question. Do you think that uh, in that service at that church, are they, are they uh, sowing to their own flesh? Are they, are, they, are they glorifying themselves and their own beliefs? Or are they glorifying the God of the Bible? Are they sowing to the Spirit? I know what I think. And I know that if, if I have friends and family who, who think that it's okay to be attending a church like that, who think that, oh, well, this church has great programs in the community or something. I would just say no. Uh, I would just say leave. You know, like mm-hmm. find a church that believes in the Bible. Find a church that says the creeds of the historic church, the creeds that all Christians, all Christians have confessed over the years. So when people say, oh, you know, we we just do the Sparkle Creed once or twice a year. Well, that changes. It changes the God you worship. Um, it's not a Christian creed. It's the creed of a new religion that we have seen in the in this country in the last twenty years. It's mm-hmm. the the Church of Affirmation, you know, of like yeah. radical individualism. Radical individualism, yeah, and and the affirming affirming whatever choices you make. Um, when churches put up the rainbow flag, that tells you that mm-hmm. they're also taking down the cross. Wow, that's a word, Moses. Um, mm-hmm. um, and you know, of course, they'll deny this. Uh, right, you know, you that would really trigger someone if I if 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 I'm saying that to someone who goes to a church like that, they'll say, "Well, you're just misreading the Bible. You're you're you know, Jesus is always in solidarity with the poor you're and the marginalized." You're just worshiping a white Jesus. They they would say that, <laughs> yeah. They they say, "Well, Jesus is in solidarity with the poor and marginalized throughout all time." That part's true, but. Jesus is not in solidarity with the decadence and lust of this crooked and twisted generation. Amen. Jesus stands in judgment over those things. 
Um, those things are a millstone. Um, cast mm-hmm. them off. Throw yourselves at the feet of Jesus. The people who will be saved will be people who repent, who fall at the feet of God and say, only you can save me. And it won't be prideful suburbanites who are mm-hmm. who are lost. They're so lost. And I say that, you know, without judgment, because I'm just as lost as they are without without Jesus, without the cleansing blood. And it's not the God of the Sparkle Creed who <laughs> who saves sinners. That God doesn't exist. And who knows what they would do if they did. But I don't think that they would keep the promises that God gives us in the Bible, that his precious blood covers our sins. So I'll end on that note, like in the face of this heresy, what can we do but cling to the truth of -hmm. of God's real word, you know? So um, while while people are are going cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs in Edina. I have a few more thoughts on this actually. Oh, go ahead, yeah. Yeah, I was just thinking like as you were talking, it's just so interesting that the ELCA is technically a Protestant denomination that's so strange to me because it does not seem protestant at all um and then the other thing is at the end of the clip the priestess or whatever you want to call that lady says amen and i just want to say it's really sexist she should have said amen and a woman <laughs> um so she needs to edit that that was a, that was a moses level pun <laughs> um and well, you can take that was, as an insult no, or a someone compliment who, like in the legislature got mad because someone said amen and then started saying amen and a woman. Oh, this really? was like a year and a half ago. And so Yikes. that's, yeah. Anyways, the other thing that this made me think of is there's a verse in Second Kings where it talks about like how the bad kings, they kept building pagan altars in the mm-hmm. temple of the Lord. And that's really what it reminds me of, of like Moses was saying, if you, if you are saying this creed, you are not worshiping Jesus Christ. You are not in line with the cross. Actually, you're worshiping the God of self. Um, and also you were talking about these things are a millstone and a judgment. And it reminded me of what Jesus says about, hey, if you lead these children astray, it's better for you to have a millstone tied around your neck and thrown to the sea. And I saw another clip um, by the same person, the woke preacher clips on Twitter. It was a clip of a pastor having like, you know, that little like kid ta- kid time before the sermon. Yeah. And he said, God oh, no. created land animals and water animals and amphibians and sea and birds. He created like dawn and dusk um, and night and um, all of all of the different things he created a spectrum. So he also created everyone in between male and female. And he says that he feels pretty safe saying that. And so what I think to that is, yeah, you feel feel pretty safe now. You feel safe until you're in hell, until you're burning in hell with God's wrath and judgment. Then you're not going to feel safe, and you're really not going to feel safe because you're going to have a specific judgment for leading those little children astray. Yeah. Um, and so that's just a, a good reminder, I think. Um, like you're saying they need the repentance and the forgiveness of Christ. And hopefully they come to those things. Mm -hmm. Um, But those are my thoughts on that. Moses, I really want to tell you and our audience about what's happening in Osseo because I think it's important to be aware of. Um, So like I said, some parents are standing up against LGBTQ indoctrination. So a school board um, LGBTQ woman uh, gave a pride speech and she wouldn't accept point of order. She created a very tense opening for the meeting. Um, So... After that, public commentators uh, in Osseo and just across the state actually spoke out in opposition to that uh, resolution that was passed last year and in response to this, you know, speech, um, which and this this resolution that was adopted last year in this county directs teachers to adopt, quote, gender affirming curriculum and pedagogical practices. So many members of the public criticized the district's, quote, unquote, gender inclusion policy And that mandates that all students be allowed to participate in, quote, district programming in accordance with their gender identity. So two parents read an an Osseo teacher's anonymous letter to the school board. um, And it said that exposed mandatory teacher training called uh, creating gender inclusive schools. And the teacher said that they were told that no matter what the pushback, we are not going to back down. Um, Just remind me, just remind me. Yeah. Who is in charge of the schools in Osseo? You know, like, ultimately, who is in charge? The government. <laughs> well, yes, that's kind of true. They get a lot of their... And the school I mean, they board, get their, too. Their, you know, but, but who elects the school board? How can, yeah. they, how can they claim to that's a great whatever, point. however much pushback we get, we're just going to keep doing this insane... That's a great point, actually. Yeah, because it doesn't make sense if they're getting pushback. They should think, oh, don't we want to stay elected? Do we, do right. we want to lose our seats? I don't know. Y'all, it's weird. Um, anyways, the teacher said, no matter no matter what pushback, we're not going to back the district's gender inclusion approach. So they're not going to stand in line with it. 
Um, teachers were also told that they would be talking about this stuff with young students, which is another reason the teachers were not going to do it. The teachers were also told to make students feel safer at school than at home, which totally makes it like makes the assumption that kids are being abused at home and that if they're not affirmed in their gender identity, then that's a form of child abuse. Um, and the teachers were also told to use the children's preferred pronouns. So this teacher asked in the letter, is it our job to keep secrets? Where's the opt out? which is a bold ask. To my knowledge, that was not answered. This letter was not answered. One parent in Osseo told, was told that gender ideology is, quote, integrated into lessons so that parents cannot opt out of the content, which that's really concerning to me because, yeah, it's been great. We can opt our kids out. Like, if we don't agree with stuff, then sure, let's pull them from those classes. But if it's so integrated and immersed in what the kids are learning, then there's no way to get out of it because it's in every single class. Um, at the end of this meeting, one person actually presented the graphic nudity in books that were available to high schoolers, and um, a school board member was handed a copy, and she threw it onto the ground. She was handed another, she threw it again, which just shows they're blatantly blind and refusing to acknowledge the books on the shelves. That's so insulting. Like, mm -hmm. okay, so I'm going to give you a sample of this content, which you, as a presumably a progressive member of the school board, think is great and okay, like you want this graphic nude, graphic uh, pornographic content to be available for, to high schoolers so that they can explore their identity or something. And yet you won't accept when a c concerned community member mm -hmm. who is a parent or a resident in the district, you won't accept when a parent hands you that, like you, what, what, what do you think it's, it's cursed? This is the stuff that you support having on the shelves, but you won't touch it. You don't, what, what is it? You think that's a bad photo op? Why is that so bad mm. for you? Isn't it, isn't it just wonderful and accepting during Pride Month of all times to just talk about how um, how X-rated the content Gosh. is on the shelves that's available? Like, why wouldn't the why wouldn't the school member just like pick it up and kiss it? You know, just to show <laughs> how in favor she is of inclusion of this type of uh, smut so for true. for people to have access for students to have access to. She's in favor of it. I just don't so I just don't yeah. understand her reaction. It reminds me of I think it was in this legislature. I know it's happened in different session in different sessions. Sorry. I think it was in this session, but I know it's happened different times of a member of the committee brought one of the pornographic books and started reading it. And the legislature was like, that's offensive. Stop reading that. Like, right. That's too graphic. And it was like, well, you guys are allowing this to be in our schools for our kids. So right. stop being offended and get rid of it. Um, okay. So I want you guys to be aware of that because it just, it always makes me feel happy when parents stand up for their children. And that's just a good positive message to hear. Your voice does make a difference. Uh, let's. I talk think it's probably important to say if your if your kids are in um, a public school district in Minnesota, and you haven't heard about anything like this, mm -hmm. it probably is happening, and no one's called it out yet. So take a look because if the school board isn't pushing it, individual radical teachers will be pushing it. I mean, if you look at the makeup of educators in the state, a lot of them went to really radical education programs. And we're taught that they need to, they absolutely positively need to teach children about gender and sexuality. And, and one note that you have here, Grace, says that one parent was told that gender ideology is integrated into the lessons so that parents cannot opt their children out of this content. And that's exactly how some teachers feel. They, mm -hmm. they really feel that Oh, no, no, no. I, I can't just teach math. I have to teach yeah. math in a genderqueer oh, manner or whatever. And like, so so I really would challenge you, find out if that's happening. Two plus two equals sparkly four. <laughs> <laughs> right. Or two plus two equals five, more or less, is, is what it comes down to because you're... Rainbow five. Rainbow five. <laughs> you're, you're saying that something that cannot exist... Um, uh, can exist. That is to say, I believe in number one. That is the plural of one, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Which uses they them pronouns. That, like, yeah. There you go. No, ex exactly right. Because you're, you know, every child has a mother and a father. Like Amen. biologically, that's true. But, but you know, we're we're at the point where many people obviously deny that fact because. Um, because it's convenient for them to do so. And that's happening in the classroom. So take a look at what's mm -hmm. happening in your child's classroom. And of course, this is true in private schools as well. But if it's in a public school, then um, there, there is a, you know, it's not that public schools are better than private schools, but at a public school, you can find other community members. And if the board and teachers are being negligent, you can vote them out of office. Mm -hmm. um, so that is a that is a benefit. And it's it's something that we really need to be more aware mm -hmm. of, of what's happening at school. So 
really props to the community members in Osseo for finding finding out and speaking up. So true, Moses. Um, let's briefly talk about the Dobbs Decision Day rally. Was it called like the An- Dobbs Anniversary Rally? I think it was something like something that. Something like that. Um, so one year ago, of course, uh, Roe v. Wade was overturned by the case Dobbs v. Jackson, which was such an amazing experience. I was able to be at the rally, give a speech. Um, it was just such an amazing day. <clears throat> so one year later, of course, we are still celebrating, even though Minnesota has taken some backward steps. Um, we will never stop fighting. And so we rallied at our state capitol uh, with our allies at pro-life action ministries and other key leaders and pastors and public figures throughout the state. And our CEO, John Helmberger, gave an excellent speech. I think it's like three minutes long, so definitely worth your time. So go ahead to our YouTube right now at MN Family Council and watch it. It'll also be linked in our description and in the email that you get every single week. Um, But that was just super excellent, right, Moses? Uh, That was an amazing clip. So like one thing about John that that we both really appreciate mm-hmm. is how he's always so inspiring and he's always pushing us to the gospel. Mm-hmm. Um, and that is, you know, that's one of the things that makes this a Christian organization rather than just some, t- some type of conservative group, you know, that isn't based on, uh, based on faith, but based on just like limited government or something. Limited mm-hmm. government is great. We support that, but this is a Christian organization. And so John really brought the gospel mm-hmm. to this rally and I was just so inspired. So, so watch that be inspired and, and just think how, uh, I think he's, he's talking about not, not now, not five years, but you know, the gospel gives us a time scale of a hundred years, a thousand years for Jesus to reign on this earth. And of course we hope that life will be protected in Minnesota much, cl- much sooner than that, not a hundred years, but five years, 10 years. That's yeah. the time scale we're thinking. We're not worried because mm-hmm. progressives have passed these laws, which as Grace said, have taken a backward step. That just means we have a little bit more work to do when we rewrite that rule book and protect life in Minnesota instead of threatening it. Yeah. That is really something I so appreciate about John is that even in the darkest of times, um, this session was so awful. He never lost hope. He never backed down. He never showed himself to be hopeless in front of the team. He was always encouraging, inspiring, hopeful, pointed us to scripture. And I just so appreciate that in a leader. And so we are so grateful for that. And actually multiple people, we posted this on social media, Most multiple people commented, thank you so much for sharing. Love this man. Wow. I'm so encouraged. Like I'm so grateful for him pointing us to the gospel in this time. And so we are very grateful for our CEO. Uh, Moses, go ahead and tell our audience what they should pay attention to while we are off air, because we are going to be on break from the podcast for about four weeks. Yes. So the good thing is that July is generally a pretty quiet, uh, July in a non-election year is generally pretty quiet. So um, presumably there's not going to be a ton of news about uh, the race for president next year. Um, uh, although I would continue to follow the the Trump uh, Trump Trump's legal cases and just how various Republican candidates are doing. Um uh, one thing that's interesting that you'll probably see more of in the next month, uh, Democrats are really rallying around President Biden. Um, there was there were moments last year where people like California Governor Gavin Newsom were kind of getting out in front of the president and saying things that made it sound like maybe he was jockeying to mm-hmm. run. But once it became clear that President Biden was running for re-election, uh, the Democrats all uh, trooped in behind him, uh, even though many of them privately and sometimes publicly have doubts about whether he's he's fit to serve given his advanced age and other things. So um, you'll see more Democrats uh, uniting around Biden. He, they they really think he's the best ca- chance that they, that they have because, for example, Vice President Kamala Harris is um, by some measures the most unpopular vice president in history, which is unfortunate. It's just um, that she laughs at really like sad things. Every time <laughs> someone's like, what, what, what are your, th-? it's like after Ukraine got invaded, what, what are your thoughts on the crisis in Ukraine? She's like, ah! well, you know, you know, <laughs> that's what she does. You it's know, it, so it, bad. It, it's off-putting. It's I, I have a it's little awful. bit of sympathy to her. I, instead of her being a psychopath, I wonder if she's just nervous, you know? I think she is, but I'm just saying it's such bad messaging because it makes her look so bad. It's like, you should not laugh at a bunch of people getting killed. Sorry. No, yeah, lady. right, right. It, and it's a country completely being completely misread, misread the moment. And and um yeah, there's other examples or of her is, doing is she that. She the one yeah. that says like let's circle back or is that the press secretary that got fired? I think that was the press secretary. She didn't get fired. She left. Oh, she uh, left. when when you're a press secretary, Jen Psaki, Jen Psaki yeah, she left and and I'll have to as circle former, back with you on that. <laughs> yeah. The press secretary is always they never stay for super long. It's a really demanding job and then once they are done, they can 
get some really cushy job on uh, like on, on news. On, She's uh, like the Fox primetime girl. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Republican and Democrat, like uh, another of Trump's former press secretaries, um, Sarah Huckabee Sanders, is now the governor of Arkansas. So it's really a stepping stone uh, that can lead to great things. So another. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so it's going to be a quiet month. However, you really should pay attention to what the Supreme Court will mm-hmm. be doing. It could even be this week uh, that we'll see uh, decisions in two really key cases. Uh, 303 Creative is one, and Groff versus DeJoy is another. And these are both religious freedom cases, and uh, they're pretty important. So uh, one of them, a 303 Creative, is about a Christian website designer and whether she has the right to uh, to choose which websites uh, that she creates or whether if she was um, asked to create a, a website for, a, a let's say, a, an LGBT wedding, for example, would she be forced to do that? Would it be discriminatory for her not to do that because of her faith? So that's the question before the court, a very important case. Um, and you might think, hasn't the court already decided this in like the masterpiece mm-hmm. cake shop case and so forth? Yeah, they did. But then there was like the Bostock case. And we really need to have Renee Carlson on to discuss the ins and outs of religious freedom yeah. law because it's a complicated and tricky landscape. I think we're, we're really on a knife edge, in my opinion, as to, as to whether religious freedom for Christians uh, on issues of gender, sexuality, life is actually going to be protected by the First Amendment or whether it's going to be a dead letter. So yeah. that's why 303 Creative is so important. Yes. Yeah, so when we come back on the podcast after a month, we will have Renee Carlson on to talk about these things. Um, she's also probably going to be writing some blog posts for us, and those will be in our emails. So stay tuned for that. Excellent. One other thing that will happen while we're on break is I will be getting married. So I am. <gasps> Yay! Yes, I will be getting married. So excited. Um yeah. Okay, Moses. That's going to be, yeah, which obviously is going to be crazy. And so. Yeah. Um, so yeah. you'll podcast like the time back without me because I will be on my honeymoon. I'm yeah, sure that's right. So it'll probably, the next episode may be just me or it might be me and Renee, uh, yeah. which I think would be a great episode. So folks, Grace is getting married. This is a, a huge uh, period of change for the podcast. I just want you guys all to give Grace a hearty congratulations. Shoot us Aww. a message on Instagram or uh, a comment on YouTube and just say congrats, Grace, because we're so excited for her. And um, yeah, yeah, her fiance is an awesome guy. And uh, I personally can't wait for the wedding. I, I know it's going to be a it's blast. It's going to be some good food, dude. I, I'm so excited. I the, have like people, professionals playing strings and piano and stuff for us. No, ki- yeah, no kidding. Excited. Wow. Yeah, I'm so excited. That is so cool. Yeah. Anyways, uh, Moses, let's thank you so much let's talk about what we're reading what are you reading this week oh i'm reading so much i'll just gonna try to keep it short Mm -hmm. um i just read uh dark night of the soul by Mm. saint john of the cross gotta be honest it wasn't my cup of tea like it just didn't connect with me which i was really surprised by because i'd heard so much of this and i've really been on a kick of medieval christian mysticism And I didn't, I didn't enjoy it. And then the next book I picked up in that vein is called The Cloud of Unknowing, um, which is another classic of medieval mysticism. But I like it much better. So it's really weird. It's, it's basically about how you, you go into contemplative prayer and you, and you can't really know about God. God has to reveal himself to you. You can't just get to God with your reason alone, right? So that's been really interesting. Mm-hmm. And then um, for my more fun um, reading, I'm also uh, reading a novel, which is kind of interesting, kind of strange, called A History of the Island by a Russian author by called Eugene Fodolashkin. Fodolashkin. Hmm. Yeah, it's sort of like a sort of like a alternate history of Europe. Um, oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's very it's very odd. I've never read a book like it, but I ha- I'm not that far in, so I'll have to I'll have to get back to you on on what I think. Yeah. Um, what are you reading? I'm still making my way through Anna Karenina for like the second or third time. Mm. It's just so good. Um, I think I have like eight hours left on Audible. So I'm very far through it because Mm -hmm. I think it's like 40 hours total. So it's a lot. I listen to it while I'm driving on double speed. And then when I'm in the morning when I'm getting ready. Nice. That is interesting. Both of us listen to audiobooks on super fast Mm -hmm. speed. I wonder if our listeners listen to this podcast on super fast speed. I don't think anyone could understand me if I was double (laughs) speed because I feel like I already talk double speed. I try to slow it down for you guys, but... You know, you it's do talk hard. fast. So do I when I'm extra caffeinated. You know, we should have like a, probably sometime just a, like a bonus podcast where we only talk about books. Yes. That'd be oh, so fun. Maybe so, we should pre-record one and then release it on break. 
Yeah, yeah. For for That'd be so fun. Only if you actually like the podcast Gosh. would we actually. Uh, or, or like this portion of the podcast, I should say, because um, not everyone, I think, um, uh, uh, reads, uh, uh, reads the like same books we do. Five but... <laughs> books of the year or oh, something yeah, like that. Yeah, oh, my yeah. goodness. I would love that. I would nerd out. OK, Moses, please close us with um, a word from Scripture and just encourage our audience. Yeah. Yeah, so this is this is I guess my my charge to you guys as we go on this podcast break. So I won't be talking to you in this mode for a little while. Um, so I'm going to Philippians two uh, fourteen through sixteen. Do all things without grumbling or disputing, that you may be blameless and innocent, children of God without blemish, in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast to the word of life, so that on the day of Christ, I, that is Paul, may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. So incredible, incredible verse. And this is another one that reminds me of our CEO, John Helberger, because he quotes it all the time. Um, if we're not shining... If we're not shining in the world, then what is the point? What is the point of our Christianity? And let's let's look at what it means to shine. Mm -hmm. it, it who are who are the people who are shining? It's the people who are holding fast to the word of life. What is that word of life? It's the gospel. So if you are denying the gospel, if you are you know like the Sparkle Creed thing we talked about, if you are denying the gospel, you are not one of those who are shining as lights in the world. It's the people that God has saved and drawn out of their sin through the light and who are now holding fast to that word. And then that is the people that the apostles and the evangelists and our parents will be proud of and who mm -hmm. will will not run that race in vain. Um, so let that I just charge you to be children of God without blemish. And it might seem minor, but Paul starts this by saying doing all things without grumbling or disputing. And I think that's so important when it comes to our family lives, uh, our churches. Are you complaining about what's going on in your family? Are you complaining about what's going on in your church? That is that is a dangerous thing. It's a dangerous thing. You could be, um, you could be leading yourself astray. You could be leading others, others astray. Paul is making that connection, even though grumbling, complaining, those seem like minor things, seem things that we can just brush off. Those are things to repent of. Mm -hmm. And I say that to myself more than to anyone else. So thank you guys so much for watching and listening to this first half of season three of the Family Beacon podcast. We'll be back uh, early August with the continuation of season three. Remember, this is where you can get the facts so that you can stand for truth. Thank you so much for watching or listening. Thanks for listening to or watching this episode of the Family Beacon podcast from Minnesota Family Council. Subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts so you're up to date on life, family, and religious freedom. You can follow us on Instagram at MN Family Council and subscribe to us on YouTube to watch our content. Get the facts, stand for truth. Mm -hmm.